Let's now look at uh, how we can solve the heterogeneous agent matching model. Um, and the way to solve it would be very much like the representative agent uh, matching model. Uh, first, we'll have to figure out uh, what the market tightness is. And then from the tightness, we can infer the value of all the other variables in the model. Uh, but the, the crux of, the, of solving the model is finding the market tightness. So how are we going to do that? Um, so uh, to do that, we, we have to, um, again, look at the supply side and the demand side of the model. Um, so in our model, we'll have two key relationships. So on the aggregate supply side, we have that output is equal to uh, output is given by the aggregate supply curve, which is uh, a function of tightness, it's f over x times k. And then on the aggregate demand side, we know that output is equal to sigma of x, the marginal propensity to spend, times y s of x, the aggregate supply, plus mu over p. Okay, so we have these two uh, key relations, one that come from the supply side, one that come from the demand side. So uh, basically, uh, we have to solve a system of equation with um, two variables here and um, two equations. The two variables being y output and x, the tightness, and the two equations being this equation from supply side, equation from the demand side. So if we write this system, we can write it as y is equal to y s of x. That's the first equation that links output to tightness. And the second one is y is equal to sigma x y s of x plus mu over p, okay? Right, but uh, key thing is that if y is equal to y s of x, what we can do is we can substitute uh, y s of x out of the second equation and replace it by y. So this system is exactly equivalent to this other system, which is y equal to y s of x, and then y is equal to sigma x, y plus mu over p. And so here what we've just done is just we've just uh, we've just done a substitution. Okay. Um, but then once I've done that I can uh, shuffle terms in my second equation to be able to uh, separate and have y only on the uh, left hand side and x on the right hand side. So this is again equivalent to y is equal to y s of x. <clears throat> and here I have y is equal to sigma x. Uh, 1 minus sigma x mu over p. And here's the way I did it is that I brought this term here, y that was going to be multiplied by sigma x, and I brought it on the uh, I brought it on the other side of the equation, uh, which just would have given me one minus sigma x times y is equal to sigma x mu over p. Uh, and then once I divide everything by one minus sigma x, I guess y is equal to sigma x one minus sigma x mu over p. Okay, uh, so here I have two equations that link uh, tightness to output, but here is something uh, something 
occurs here that will allow us to bridge with what we saw in the representative agent model. So let's look at this equation, the second one. Um, so sigma x over 1 minus sigma x, it turns out that this is equal to um, chi epsilon 1 plus tau x uh, 1 minus epsilon. Okay, and uh, how do I know that? That's because sigma x, uh, let's see, do we have the expression here? No. Uh, that's because sigma x is equal to chi epsilon 1 plus tau x 1 minus epsilon divided by 1 plus chi epsilon That's because uh, sigma x is equal to this, and as a result of sigma x equal to this, 1 minus sigma x is going to be equal to uh, just 1 over 1 plus chi epsilon 1 plus tau x. Sigma x is this fraction, 1 minus sigma x is 1 over 1 plus k epsilon, 1 plus tau x, 1 minus epsilon, and therefore, if I take the ratio of sigma x by 1 minus sigma x, I'm left with just k epsilon, uh, 1 plus tau x, 1 minus epsilon. Okay? Um, so, this means that I can uh, rewrite my system. So, the system... That describe um, the model. Therefore, is uh, so we have two equations. We have y is equal to y s of x. That's the first one. And then we have y is equal to chi epsilon. And then let me divide one plus tau x epsilon minus one mu over p. This is my second my second equation. Once I plug in, uh, once I plug in the expression for sigma x over one minus sigma x. Okay, um, but here, this equation here, this is just the aggregate demand from the representative agent model. Uh, so what has happened here is that once I uh, substitute out the uh, aggregate supply and taking it work, you know, in my system, and I purge out the second equation from the aggregate supply, then I can rewrite uh, I can rewrite the equation and then obtain uh, obtain a new equation that links tightness to output, that's exactly the aggregate demand curve I had before. And, you know, it's aggregate demand because it reflects the amount of output that uh, households are going to uh, to demand. But to obtain it, you do need to purge out the supply that captures the income of household. Uh, and what will be nice is that you can see that we know that the aggregate supply is increasing in tightness. The second equation, the aggregate demand, you see if, if the price P is fixed, which, you know, that will depend on the price norm we assume, but let's, for now, let's take P fixed. You can see that X appears only in the denominator, but so tau X is increasing, epsilon minus one is bigger than one, so one plus tau X, epsilon minus one, um, that's going to be increasing and it's in the denominator that's decreasing. So what's nice here is that once we've done this transformation, this is this first equation here, that's going to be increasing in X. And then the second equation here, if P is fixed, uh, that's going to be decreasing in X, and then therefore we'll have a strictly increasing function in X, a strictly decreasing function in S, and we'll be able to fix, we'll be able to show that the system therefore admits a unique solution. You know, so that's quite clean. You have an increasing equation or decreasing equation. Um, but in any case, now let's define uh, the aggregate demand curve. So let's define y d of x p 
as key epsilon 1 plus tau x epsilon minus 1 mu over p So let's define the aggregate demand like this. Uh, then the model is given by the following system. So once we define our aggregate demand, then we can see that our model is just given by y is ys of x and y is yd of x and p. Um, so both equations have to be satisfied. Um, and therefore, uh, market tightness is implicitly given by So the, therefore, the market tightness is a solution of ys of x is equal to yd of xp. So exactly like in the so here we exactly like in the representative agent model, uh, the aggregate supply curve will have the same expression. You know, once we use uh, aggregate capacity, the aggregate demand curve will have the exact same expression and tightness will be given by the intersection of the supply and demand curve or it will be given by the equality of aggregate supply and aggregate demand. So in fact, introducing um, wealth inequality, income inequality doesn't change anything in the way that we can determine market tightness in the model. So exactly as in the representative so tightness equalizes AD and AS curves. So that's the same to get tightness, you have to equalize aggregate demand and aggregate supply. AD and S curves have the same expression and therefore the same properties. Uh, have the same expression and some property as in the representative agent model. So we know that the aggregate supply is increasing in tightness, concave aggregate demand is decreasing in tightness for a given price. Uh, so everything remains exactly the same. Uh, and tightness equalizes aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And then um, once we have tightness, then we can roll out the solution procedures that we saw in the representative agent model to figure out all the value of all the other variables. And so we can just for completeness, we can uh, review how we get the other variable. And here, I don't give an analytical expression for tightness because to do that, we would need to make an assumption about what the price norm is. Um, and we would need to have the price norm to figure out what is tightness and then the rest. But in terms of structure, we know that we need to solve aggregate demand equal aggregate supply to have uh, the tightness. And then once tightness is obtained, we can obtain all the other uh, variable. Uh, so we know that the price level is going to be given by the price norm at the tightness. Uh, of course, we know that output is going to be given by the supply. Uh, at the tightness, because this is, you know, it's always going to be true um, for the tightness that's realized output the on the aggregate supply. Um,
um, consumption, aggregate consumption, we know that it's going to be output divided by 1 plus tau x, where 1 plus tau x is a matching wage. Uh, this is taking into account the fact that there is a matching cost that you have to take into account. Then aggregating, of course, um, all the budget constraint of the household. We know that the total amount of money that's held at the end of the day must be equal to the endowment of money. Um, so basically here, uh, be, because we have a matching model and because everything that's sold is always equal to everything that's bought on the matching model, by aggregating all the, all the budget constraint, we immediately find that the last remaining market, which is the market for money, is going to be clearing in a sense. So uh, you automatically get Valras law here, although we have slack in the model and although uh, people, you know, the trading probability are strictly less than one. People don't sell everything they want to sell. They don't buy everything they want to buy. But nevertheless, Valras law always holds that the last market the last market, which is here, the market for money, is going to clear. Uh, so this is basically a version of the RAS law. Uh, consumption and then the total aggregate number of, of uh, visits. We know that that's always going to be equal to Y, the number of transactions divided by QX. Uh, the probability that a visit is successful. So we have everything else, and these are uh, we can so uh, we can compute all the aggregate uh, variables. And of course, you can also compute the individual variables, and that's something that we did um, as we were building up the model, so we've seen already at the individual level, um, you know, what is the, uh, out, you know, how much output is bought by each individual, which we had called YI, how much is consumed by each individual, how many visits are done by every individual, how much money is held by each individual. Um, and of course, the price is the same for all uh, transactions, so this is not something we have to talk about, but um, we had seen before that YI, C i m i v i they can be computed from of course uh, the endowment of wealth u i and capacity k i and uh, the tightness x This is true for all I, for all households uh, I. This is something that we've done earlier when we were computing consumption and saving uh, by every household. And we know, I mean, essentially it's pretty easy. Why I, how much is bought by every household is going to be the marginal propensity to spend time, the initial income and wealth. CI would be Y I divided by one plus two X. MI would be the marginal propensity to save times initial income and real wealth. Um, and then VI would just be YI divided by QX. Um, so then we can get uh, we can get everything. I mean, um, we can summarize it here. So YI we know is just going to be sigma X times F of X KI plus mu I divided by P. CI would be YI divided by one plus tau X. Mi over P would be 1 minus C my X times Fx Ki plus mu I divided by P Vi is Yi divided by Qx. And I think that covers it. Um, this is something that we had already seen before. And then you've characterized everything in your model. Now, of course, to make a bit more progress and get analytical characterization of X, you need to make an assumption about um, what the price norm that we have here is um, to see exactly, you know, what X is and how X behave, and then from that back out all the other variables. 